In this problem, we're told that each of these containers holds, well, you can do the calculation, but they all hold the same amount of ping pong balls. In all cases, right, these, these containers hold 36 ping pong balls, and you might be confused because the length, widths, and heights don't multiply to 36, but that's because <clears throat> the ping pong balls, right, these are measured in centimeters. We don't know how large these ping pong balls are, um, so we, we don't have to make the connection right there, right? The volume is constant. The volume is always, right, the volume is always 36. But they're asking you which of these will require the least amount of packaging, which will have the least surface area. And, and they're asking, can you do it intuitively without calculating? And then can you support your intuition with a calculation? So here, here we go. I would say intuitively that the package that requires the least amount is right here. Right, this would require the least. Because this, this shape is the most compact. In this shape, stuff in the middle are a bunch of ping pong balls that are hidden by the ones on the outside. So their surface area does not need to be covered by the packaging. They're hidden inside. However, this one will have the most surface area because it's the most stretched out. And every ping pong ball, you can see it's only one deep here. And the ping pong balls go right there in a row. So the packaging has to cover the surface area of every ping pong ball and thus the surface area is the most here. But let's calculate, right? Because we don't want to just, we don't want to, we, we don't, we have, often in, in math, or sometimes in math, I feel like my intuition might be off because I might not be observing something. So let's calculate this. Well, and, and I'm just gonna calculate the, the extremes, I'll leave it to you to calculate the two middle ones here. But for the, the most one, right, on the bottom it's four by 12. There's a face in the bottom and it's four by 12. And there'll be two of them on top and bottom. So I'm going to multiply 4 times 12, and then I'm going to double that. So it's 48 times 2, which is 96. And then I have this height right here of 48 with a depth of 12, and I have two of those as well. Let me use my line tool. All right, the height is 48, and the depth is 12. And there's, there's two sides, right? There's one here, and there's one on the opposite. So I'm going to multiply 48 by 12, which I'll have to do a little long multiplication, and then double that. So it's 48 by 12. Well, 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 0. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 4 is 4. Add them up. 6, 7, 1, 5. So it's 576 doubled times 2. Well, this one I can do in my head because 2 times 500 is 1,000. 2 times 70 is 140, 2 times 6 is 12, so it's 1,152, right? 1,000 plus 140 plus 12. So this equals 1,152. And the front one here, the front face, and the, and the rear face are 4 by 48. And we're doubling that. 4 times 48, oops, 4 times 48, doubled. That's the surface areas, the front and the rear faces. So it's 4 times 48. Well, 4 times 40 is 160, and 4 times 8 is 32. So that's 192. Doubled, 192 times 2. Well, 2 times 100 is 200, plus 90 doubled is 180. So 200 plus 180 plus 4, that's 384. So 384. So these are the numbers that we're dealing with right here. Before I even add them, let's check our intuition. Let's look at the areas of this shape over here. The bottom face right, and the top face are both 12 by 12. In this case, that's, that's 144 times 2. Because we have to double them. The bottom is 144, and so is the top. That's 288. And the front side here is 12 by 16 and so is the right side. In fact, the other four faces are all 12 by 16. So now we're going to multiply 12 times 16 and then we're going to multiply that by 4, right? Because, well, there's four of them. So what's 16 times 12? Well, 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 10 or 2 times 1, you can think of that, is 2 plus 1 is 3. Add the 0. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. We get 192. Now, before we even add the specifics, and that's why I like this problem, the numbers tell us everything we need to know here. Because 1,152 is bigger than, you could say this, 300 and 200, even round these up, you know this total surface area has to be bigger 
than this total surface area if just two of the faces right here are larger than all of the faces of this one. So this does have a lot more surface area than this one. And you'll find that the ones in between, in fact, because these two, especially these two right here, are equal, you just see that one's been turned on its side, um, they will be between these two volumes. And I think you should take some time to do that to get some practice with surface area and to get a sense of what's happening here. Why are these two in the middle? And why is the compact and stretch one out on the extreme? And I hope you can find your own words to describe why this is happening and maybe share that with me because I, I often have a hard time describing what's happening here. So thanks a lot.